What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious Part 4. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Every time I stay at my grandma's house, I hear someone walking upstairs. It starts at one side of the room, casually walks to the other, and stops. This will happen maybe twice a night. I didn't start hearing it until I was about 14, when my grandparents made me start sleeping in a different room on the first floor because they starting sleeping in separate bedrooms. Blah, blah, blah. Regardless, both of their rooms are also on the first floor. For a little backstory, I have always been afraid of the upstairs at their house. I don't know why, but it's always freaked me out, and I refuse to ever go up there alone. I'm 23 now, still won't go up alone. There's one room specifically, though it's a long, narrow bedroom. When you open the door, there are closets on your left and right, a bed placed roughly in the middle of the room, and a window on the far side opposite the door. I was told growing up by my grandparents that the sons of the previous owner claimed to see a odd gorilla come out of the closet at night, dance around the room, and go back into the closet. I thought nothing of this story until I had to start sleeping in the other room. The room located directly below the scary room upstairs, so we all go to bed. All the lights in the house are off and I'm still awake lying on the bed. Then I heard it. Thump. 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 Starting at one end of the room upstairs. It got closer to me, passed right above me, and continued to the end of the room where it stopped. I'm wide awake, terrified out of my mind. It was no question to me that I had heard footsteps. I knew that slow, casual pace. I was freaked out and went to my grandpa's room. I told him what I heard. He told me that the house is old and it creaks. But he turned the dining room light on for me, so I felt a little safer. I tried going back to sleep. Then it started again. This time from where it ended the first time. By the window upstairs, it walks over me again and stops when it reached the door. I thought it was over until five seconds later when I heard it coming down the stairs. One, two, three, four, five. Silence as it reached the landing. Then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And silence again as it reached the first floor. I was frozen in shock. Whatever it was, it was on my floor of the house and sadly unaffected by the dining room light. I was staring at the doorway to my room. The dining room light was shining in and my vision began to distort. I felt dizzy with fear, so I pulled the blankets over my head and suddenly heard a scratching sound from inside my room. I knew exactly where it was coming from, too. My grandpa's gun case. It was a very obvious sound, scratching on the wood. Long scratches down the front of the gun case door. I could even hear the door ever so slightly tapping against the frame as each scratch began. I tried to scream and I couldn't. I took a second to take a deep breath and let out a loud scream. In seconds, my grandpa had made it to my room and I was relieved. Needless to say, he still didn't believe me. So I did what any normal person would do. I draped a sheet over the side of the bed and slept underneath it. I wrapped myself tight in a comforter, put on headphones and turned my back to the door. There could be a party of ghosts in my room and I wouldn't even know. The next morning, my grandpa told my grandma about what happened the night before. She said, oh, that's silly. You know, your cousin woke me up the last time she stayed here. She came in my room saying, I hear footsteps. I slept under the bed for the rest of my week stay with them. I've stayed there countless times since that happened, and I hear the footsteps every time. I sleep on top of the bed now, but keep my back to the door and sleep with headphones on. I haven't heard it come down the stairs since that first night, but if it does, I don't want to know. Edits because I'm bad at writing and I can't stay in the same tense. Account 2. When I was about seven, my two brothers and I were playing in an area that was used as an unofficial motocross place. We decided to dig a tunnel for some reason. Being the extra smart guys we were, it took a few hours to dig about six ift in and two feet high. I was right up at the face when suddenly the tunnel collapsed. It was all dirt with no supports. My world went instantly black and hot. By hot, I mean furnace hot. I couldn't move a muscle from the weight of the soil completely enclosing me. I started to really panic, as you do. Everything started turning red, which I guess was blood being forced into my head. Every breath was getting harder as the soil constrained me more and more. 
Even though my hands were near my face, I couldn't move my arms to clear the dirt around my head and also started breathing in dirt, which made me cough, which made me contract my stomach, and then I couldn't draw breath at all. This isn't what made me panic, though. The total darkness turning red with the incredible heat made my young mind think I was going to hell. I don't know how long I was buried for, but it seemed like an eternity. Suddenly, I felt something grab one of my feet. My brothers had been frantically digging through the collapse to pull me out and managed to reach me and then pull me out. We never told my parents. I just went home and got hosed down. TLDR got buried alive and pissed myself. Account 3. Posted this before, but I'll do it again. I was on Manassas Battlefield with my father when I was younger. We were sitting on the back of his tailgate eating McDonald's on top of a hill looking at some cannons. It was foggy and misty out that day with a slight chill. November, I think. All of the sudden we see a man dressed in full Civil War attire waving at us standing by the cannons, about 50, 100 meters away. My dad had a pair of binoculars with him, and we got a closer look of the man. He appeared to be in a Confederate uniform and was standing stationary, only moving his arm to wave. It was a, come here, wave. My dad thought there was a reenactment going on and the, that the man needed help. So my dad walked down to the man while I watched with the binoculars. When my dad got close to the man, he stopped walking and had a confused posture. After a couple seconds next to the man, he turns around and sprints back to me. He proceeds to throw everything in the back of the truck, and we leave the battlefield in a hurry, my dad said, while walking down there. The man slowly disappeared, and my dad said he got the strangest feeling in his stomach and mad chills. To this day, my dad gets the chills and goosebumps telling the story. My dad saw combat in Vietnam, so he is not an easy guy to scare. From my perspective, my dad was right next to the guy and never disappeared. We don't know what we saw, but I think it was a ghost, TLDR. I think we saw a ghost of a Confederate soldier, account four. When I was a child, I lived in an old Victorian house, and I would always hear laughing while I was trying to sleep. I was an only child with a single mother, and when I was about five, six, I would wake up hearing laughter in the hallway in the middle of the night. After mentioning this to my mum, she swore it was probably just the TV being left on late. One night, I awoke hearing the laughter in my room. I went to sit up, but felt like there was someone holding my shoulders down, invisible hands gripping into my shoulders while I heard laughing. I screamed my little heart out. My mom ran into my room, flicking on the bedside lamp, convincing me it was just a dream until I said, but my shoulders hurt. She lifted up my t-shirt and there were two adult-sized handprints on my shoulders. I honestly thought I had imagined it and that it had never happened. But the other day I mentioned it in passing to my mum and she went blanket white and said, I don't want to remember that. Account 5. About four years ago I woke up one late morning on a day off at 1021. You'll learn why I remember this four years later in a second. I got out of bed, used the restroom, got dressed, etc. I went back into my room and picked up my phone to check for messages, and the clock in the phone said 1025. I was surprised, because I know that it did not take me only four minutes to dress. I'd lingered in the warm bathroom quite a while and brushed my teeth too, etc. I looked at my bedroom alarm clock to confirm, since that was the clock I'd looked at when I woke up. It also said 10 to 25. I shrugged it off and figured in my sleepy, just woke up state, I'd misread the original 1021. I went downstairs, turned on the PC, turned on the news on the TV to listen to, and started cooking breakfast. I wanted microwave up some rice leftovers from last night, so I went to pop them in the microwave. The time on the microwave was 10.25. I whipped out my phone to check the time. It still said 10.25. There was no way, there was no way that I checked the clock upstairs, walked downstairs, turned on the PC and the TV, got a glass of water, and started cooking eggs in the matter of less than a minute. I decided to stand there and watch the microwave clock while counting to 60. I figured if it didn't turn to 1026 in 60 seconds of less, clearly it was malfunctioning. It turned to 1026 about 20 seconds into my count, which made sense. It had been 1025 for a while before I looked. I finished making my breakfast, 
plated it up, and took it over to the PC, like the lonely slob I am. The time on the PC said 10.20. I pulled out my phone. My phone also said 10.20. That's when I started writing all this shit down. I pulled up the little clock toolbar and watched the second hand go around. While I watched it, time seemed to pass normally. It ticked to 10.21 and 10.22 as I watched the second hand go around. Over the next what felt like an hour or so, maybe hour and a half, all the clocks in my house, as well as internet ones, seemed to pass time normally while I observed them. But if I looked away for a while, at least two minutes or so, they'd make no sense. At one point, about 15 minutes after these events, the cell phone and PC read 10 to 14, then later 10 to 13, then back into the 10, 20 SS after the hour, hour and a half. They normalized, and I've never experienced it since, TLDR, one day all my clocks went fucking insane. Count six. After we moved into our new house last year, our neighborhood is one of the oldest in the country. Dates back to the mid 1600 hours. The house we live in was built in 1827. One night I woke up, turned over to the side of the bed, and saw a man dressed in very, very old formal attire at the side of the bed, leering at me in the exact manner you describe. I blinked and he was gone. But that look, the strained, gigantic smile is not going to leave my memory for a long time. Count seven. I was living in this apartment in Oslo that just had this weird vibe. There were three of us living there, two girls and I. This was a building from the mid-1800s. Several weird things happened there. One of the rooms I didn't want to even go in. It was cold, even if the rest of the place was perfectly warm. Every time I was in there, thoughts of children crying or being in some kind of peril went through my head. I can't explain any better. I could not stay in there for very long. My room was the old living room, and one morning I awoke to something growling like a big cat or snarling dog in my room. I was pinned down in my bed, although nothing was there. I could not move. I was scared shitless. One of the girls I lived with had a cat, and even though it was only a year old, it just suddenly died. We were just hanging out, and all of a sudden we heard the cat making these horrible sounds. It was just lying in the bathroom on the floor, tongue out, gasping for air and making this horrible sound. Then it died. It took like ten minutes. I moved out of that place shortly after. I'm a very big skeptic. I don't believe in ghosts, etc. But that place was really unnerving. Account 8. This is from the very first comment I made on Reddit. It was pretty creepy and somewhat disturbing. When I was 15 or 16, my three- or four-year-old sister drank some green nail polish remover she got from the bathroom sink. It looked like mouthwash. We guessed she was imitating our parents. Our neighborhood pharmacy had an assistant rush over some Ipecac and something else. Malox, maybe IDK. While we were waiting, she was on the bathroom floor in pain when she told us, I drank some green stuff and died one time. My husband ran off with a girl and I got sad and drank some green stuff and died. My girls were crying and sad when I died. We were freaked. Sister is fine. TLDR. My three or four year old sister told us of her suicide in a previous life. Account nine. I was in high school. The bus had just dropped me off and I was unlocking the front door when a grown man on came onto the lawn and asked me if I had any money. I said no. He kept approaching me, I got the door unlocked, and then Bear, my 100-pound, solid, black, territorial, working German shepherd, came barking and growling, practically frothing at the mouth. The creep took one look at Bear and noped the fuck out of there. I don't like to think what would have happened if I hadn't had Bear. Account 10. When I was in high school, I had a class in what was known as the Orange Hall. Every day in that class, I would annoying hear someone whistling the song, Pop, Goes the Weasel but really slowly. Two years later, when I had a class in the same hall, I heard it again nearly every day. Now my sister is in high school, and her friend said something about someone whistling the song. I found this strange, because my sister is so much younger than me. There is no way the same annoying student was still there doing this every day. She said she asked her teacher about it, and the teacher said, that happens every day around the same time. It's been happening for 10 years, and they've never been able to find anyone whistling in the halls. Account 11. I was on holiday in Cancun, Mexico. 
It was 2005 and I was 15. Having been for a swim, I decided to go and get a shower and changed before getting something to eat. I entered the apartment and went through to my room, grabbed my stuff, and entered the bathroom. As I shut the bathroom door behind me, I felt something fall onto my hand. When I looked, I saw a large black Mexican hell monster with a few too many legs for my taste. It completely covered the back of my hand, and in the brief second I looked at it, I determined it was some sort of spider, tarantula. Now, being from England, I am neither used to or capable of dealing with such creatures, so was forced to rely on pure human instinct. This was it. Fight or flight. Kill or be killed. This was my moment to prove I had become a man. I could tame the beast and parade it in front of my family. I could prove to the world I was its master, and no beast on this planet could take me down. I let out a sudden roar and started shaking my hand violently to force this monstrosity off while making my way on top of the toilet seat. It fell on the floor and lay still not moving an inch. I grew in confidence and put one foot back on the floor to investigate. Suddenly it got up. This time I screamed like a believer who had just got a retweet. I retreated back to the sanctuary of the toilet seat and watched in horror as this thing scurried towards me. It had climbed to the top of the door and waited for me. The toilet seat no longer felt safe. It was going to kill me. It was then I noticed it only had six legs and was not moving like any sort of spider I knew of. My fear started to fade. I recognized the shape of the animal but couldn't put my finger on what it was. It had a large body and long spindly legs. Turns out it was a crab that didn't have any pincers. I have no idea how it got into the bathroom, as there was no windows and the door was shut. I captured it in a pan and released it near the lagoon. I like to think it got eaten by an alligator, the little fucker. Account 12. This isn't my story, but a former teacher told it to me and swears it is true. She said that when she was a child, she shared a room with her younger sister. One night she was in her bed, and her sister told her to look toward the door. She looked up and saw the silhouette of a man standing in the doorway. She had a light switch right next to her bed, so she turned it on, and there was nobody in the doorway. They called for their dad, and he came in asking them what was wrong. They told him what they had seen, and he said it was probably just their eyes playing tricks on them. The next day, my teacher went downstairs and saw her father sitting at the kitchen table just staring. She asked him what was wrong, and he said, was the man you saw a tall man? She claims that each member of the family saw the silhouette a number of times over the years, and each time it was the same thing, they would turn on a light, and there would be nobody there. I've been creeped out ever since she told me this story. Account 13. Junior year of high school, I get off a couple of bus stops early to hang out at a friend's house after school. We're playing video games when my friend's mom gets a call from mine, angrily telling me to come home. I thought I was busted for not coming right home, but she seemed particularly angry and scared at this infraction. When I get home, my mom, sister and sister's friend, are kind of frazzled and in shock. My mom is angrily asking me where I was and what I was doing after school. She doesn't believe my story of going directly to my friend's house after school and being there the whole time. I'm sent to my room. A few minutes later, my sister comes in and asks me the same thing to which I respond with the same answer and ask, why is everyone acting so weird and freaked out? While I was at my friend's house, my mom heard a voice saying my name from her bedroom window. When she looks outside to our backyard, she sees my sister, her friend, and a guy with no shirt on, hugging my sister's friend from behind. My mom swears it was me and goes out back to reprimand me for shirtlessly hugging on my sister's friend. When my mom gets outside, she just finds the two of them. There have only been the two of them out there the entire time. My mom doesn't believe them because she clearly heard a man's voice and saw the shirtless guy out there. She interrogates them as to my whereabouts because she thinks they are covering for me and I was somewhere in hiding. So here's the spooky part. My sister's friend came over because she needed someone to talk to. It was the one-year anniversary of her fiancé's suicide. Her fiancé and I share the same name. 
My mom had no context of any of this when she saw the male figure out back with her TLDR. -y. My mom saw the ghost of my sister's friend's fiance. Account 14. My friend's friend went to Vegas once to blow off some steam. She then went to a club and met a guy she thought was super cute. She hung out with him the whole night, and they made out a bit. He asked her to come home with him. She declined, as she wasn't really one to do that, but she made plans to hang out with him later. A few days later, she developed sores around her mouth, so she went to the doctor. Turns out she had contracted a flesh-eating bacteria. Not only that, but it was a strain that is only found in humans that consume other humans' flesh. The woman called the cops and they went to the guy's apartment. They found body parts in the fridge. Apparently, he had been going to clubs, taking women home with him and then eating them. And that is precisely why I will never go home with a guy.